Hello, whoever you are and wherever you are, may the grace of God be with you. Thank you for joining us as we remember the events that happened on Good Friday. We are using a modern adaptation of the Stations of the Cross. This was provided to us by the Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church in a tribute to Bethel United Methodist Church here in Middle Tennessee. This could not be possible without the help of our brothers and sisters of Glencliff United Methodist Church and Woodbine United Methodist Church. During this time, we are going to invite you to listen to the scripture, to listen to a brief meditation, and to pray with us. Also, during this devotional, you'll have an opportunity to sing along a couple hymns that you'll find here in the bottom of the screen. So if you have a United Methodist hymnal, you can find the reference here. But if you don't, we'll be providing for you the lyrics on the screen as it is prompted. And so I invite you to open your heart, open your mind, and let us be united in one spirit as we remember this event of Good Friday. And so we begin a journey with our first station, Jesus Prays Alone, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 to 44. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then the, an angel of, of heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnest, er, earnestly. And so we come to the beginning of our journey. The first station, Jesus prays alone. He came out and went, as he was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and pray, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. Consider, if you will, how would you feel if you were faced with the absolute knowledge that all that you ever loved was about to be denied to you? Jesus prayed in the garden alone, knowing that his death was about to take place and knowing that his beloved disciples will abandon him in his most dire need. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Forgive me for my forgetfulness and the times I take you for granted. Help me to be mindful that in my sinfulness I have offended you and hurt you. Have mercy and forgive my shortcomings. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Matthew 26, verses 47 through 56. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leader, leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. 
So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you have come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Think about how Jesus must have felt, having had compassion on so many and having healed so many of their infirmities, only to be met with angry, cursing people who intended to repay his goodness with harm. A betrayal from a trusted friend became an additional torment. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, so many times I have abandoned your teachings in favor of expediency. I have left behind all that you taught so many times and have neglected to duty to love others as you have loved me. Forgive me and bless me with your strength. Amen. The third station, the Sanhedrin tries Jesus. I'm reading from Mark 14, 61 through 64 in the New Jerusalem translation. The high priest put a second question to him saying, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? The verdict was unanimous. He deserved to die. Think of how Jesus must have felt being tried by the very spiritual leaders with whom God the Father entrusted his holy word. We might at least have called them hypocrites, but Jesus never said a word in his defense. Instead of an angry outcry, his loving heart forgave them for their deceit and lack of love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, sometimes I find myself confronted by unjust accusations from people I considered to be my friends. The pain I feel is so terrible at this betrayal, yet in your case, you forgave them before they did you harm and attempted to defame you. Teach me how to be humble and forgiving, but most of all, how to love so completely. In his name we pray, amen. I'll be reading the fourth station of the cross. This reading comes from the book of John, uh, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief of priests have handed you over to me. 
what have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into this world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Consider how Jesus must have felt being abandoned by his own people and turned over to heathen unbelievers for judgment. Jesus was not guilty of anything, yet he was being tried by one who knew nothing of the scriptures or of our creator, God. Think of what it must have felt like to be accused by liars, by deceivers, before someone so unjust and unforgiving as the Roman governor. Let us pray together. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, sometimes I feel like I've let down others. Sometimes I feel like I have been let down by those that I care about the most. I want to abandon them in those moments and go away on my own separate way. I don't want to do this. And I don't want to feel this way. Teach me to be compassionate. Teach me to learn the grace of Jesus and the grace of God. Teach me that when I am in a position, when I must make a decision on behalf of someone else, that I know the whole story, that I listen, that I hear their cry. In your name we pray. Amen. This reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 6 through 15. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified.
consider how Jesus, after being scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. Let us pray. King Jesus, you are the rightful and holy king. And because of our sins, we mocked and shamed you. If only instead we would have beheld your glory. Jesus, we cry out to you this day. Never allow us to separate ourselves from you again. We ask through your great mercy that you would help us to grow in our love of God and an appreciation for your sacrifice for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, today I'm going to be reading the six stations. Jesus was a crown. John 19.5 So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. Consider the pain of having sharp, hardened thorns shoved violently onto your head. Consider the blood flowing freely down your face and burning your eyes, blurring your vision so you can't even see your tormentors. Remember, Jesus' last commandment was, Love one another as I have loved you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, open my eyes when I am troubled so I don't lose the sight of suffering of others. I have never thought about how it must felt to be tortured as you were, beaten, scourged, and forced to wear a crown of thorns that ripped into your scalp. I can never bear the pain as you did without a cry of pain, let alone forgive my tormentors and continue to love them. Help me, Lord, to learn the perfect love so that I may be one with you in all that I do. Amen. Verses 17 through 18. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Consider how Jesus, in making the journey with the cross on his shoulders, thought of us and offered for us to God the death he was about to undergo. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I accept all the tribulations I will have to endure for the rest of my life. I ask you, by the merits of the pain you endured, to grant me strength to endure and carry my cross through life with patience and resignation. I repent of my sins and ask that you help me keep from separating myself from you ever again. Amen. Doing the eighth station of the cross, Simon carries the cross for Jesus. It's going to be found in Matthew 23, verse 26. And when they led him away, they laid hold of one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming in from the country, and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. Consider how the religious leaders in the fickle crowd, after seeing Jesus weaken with each step, and fearing that he would die before he was crucified, recruited Simon of Cyrene to help carry the cross behind our Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I accept the cross I have to bear. You died out of love for me. Grant me the strength to live for you, and if I die, let me die for the love of you. Help me with your grace that I may 
be aware of your will for me always. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Jesus speaks to the women, Luke 23, 27 through 31. Consider how those women wept with compassion at seeing Jesus in such a pitiful state, streaming with blood, weakened and scorned by onlookers as he walked along. Consider Jesus' words, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I weep for the sorrows I've caused in my life and for the offenses I've committed against God. You have loved me so much, and it is that love that causes me to have such great sorrow for my sins. Forgive me, Lord, and strengthen my resolve that I may never offend you again. The 10th station, Jesus is crucified. Luke 23, 33 through 34. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Considered how Jesus felt being thrown down upon the cross, ripping open the wounds of the soldiers' whips. Consider how he extended his hands, allowing those terrible nails to be driven blow by blow to his outstretched hands. Consider those awful nails being driven into those feet, those feet that had walked so far and tirelessly, bringing the good news of salvation to a hurting and hungering world. Jesus offered to God the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. His captors fastened him with nails to the cross, raised the cross and left him there to die in anguish and great suffering. At this time, spend some time in silent meditation. My scripture today is Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. 
Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our sins deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Can we consider today the pain and the anguish that Jesus must have felt being hung between two criminals and being ridiculed by the very people that he loved so much and to whom so many times he had extended compassion and healing. Consider the courage he had to forget his own pain and to minister to the criminal that had asked for his forgiveness, promising that man that he would be in paradise that very day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, so many times I have been so selfish in my pain that I forgot the pain that others feel too. I had forgotten to help when I could have. And I have violated your final commandment that we love one another. Amen. Twelfth station. Jesus speaks to Mary and John. John 19, 25 through 27. Reading from the New International Version. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Consider the pain in a mother's heart as she beheld her son nailed to a cross amid a crowd of jeering spectators. Consider her pain in seeing those cruel wounds from the scourge's whip, the crown of thorns embedded in the brow, the terrible nails holding the hands and feet that she had bathed as a baby. Consider the guilt of the beloved apostle who once ran away in fear, standing at the foot of the cross and looking up at his dying friend and Lord. Get a sense of the enormity of Jesus' love as he forgives John by granting him the privilege of caring for his mother. Consider forgiveness given in the midst of great pain and anguish. Let us pray. My Lord Jesus, by the sorrow you experienced in this great meeting, grant me the grace of a devoted love of your mother and your beloved apostles. Let their example of devotion become my own. Let their goodness in life become real in me. Forgive me when I turn away from you and grant me strength to return to you humbly. In your Father's name we pray. Amen. My reading this morning is from John 19, verses 28 through 34. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, and put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. 
When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Considering how Jesus, after three hours of agonizing pain on the cross, consumed at length with his anguish, abandoned himself to the weight of his body, bowed his head in submission, and died. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifices for me. By your death, I have hope. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus is laid on the tomb. From the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 38 to 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in that garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So we arrive to the end of a journey that began in the Gethsemane as Jesus prayed alone. And so we invite you at this time to consider how the disciples carry the body of Jesus and bury it. Consider the grieving mother who arranged the body in the tomb with her own hands. As they closed the tomb, they withdrew and they carry a burden of pain within their hearts. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you rose again on the third day. I ask you, by your resurrection, to make me rise with you at my last day. Let me be always united with you to praise you, to love you, to glorify you forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, and we hope and pray that this time has been meaningful to you. Thank you again to everyone who made this video possible, from our brothers and sisters of Glencliff United Methodist Church and the ones here at Woodbine United Methodist Church. Thank you. 
And we pray that in this season, as we are not able to worship together, that the Spirit of God continue to work with us and bring us closer by the power of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, and we'll see you Sunday as we celebrate Christ's resurrection. Amen.